You may recall that a couple of years ago I made myself a Windows 98 gaming machine. And when I first built it, it was pretty good. We tested it out and it worked with most things that I tried to play on it, but it turned out it wasn't really ideal. The Pentium 4 was just way too powerful and the one gigabyte of RAM, it was, it was just far too much. In fact, was there even two gigabytes in there? There was, a, there was a far too much RAM anyway. Uh, so, yeah, the whole hardware was just far too new for 98. And the games that I wanted to play were more suited to XP. I did actually put Windows 2000 and then XP on that machine, and somehow it just didn't work out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into two different projects. I'm going to have a Windows 98 specific machine from f or targeting some earlier hardware, and then I'm going to have a much later XP machine targeting roughly 2007-2008. I don't want it to be a powerhouse, I want it to be the sort of machine that I would have been happy with back in that era, and something that will play games from my childhood basically, and games that I would have wanted to play had I had the appropriate hardware for it. Now, this video has been in the making for quite some time, so it takes place in a variety of different locations with a variety of different um, recording setups, shall we say. So, bear with me on that front. Um, you're going to see a lot of different outfits, a lot of different locations, a lot of different lighting, um, but it's a fairly coherent build, I suppose. So, let's get to building, eh? To start with, we have an Intel Core 2 Duo E8600. It's not the highest end Core 2 Duo that was about in 2008, but I think it'll uh, do for our needs. We're not going to be running anything particularly taxing, so we don't need a Core 2 Extreme or anything like that. And it's going to be going into this motherboard, the Gigabyte G31MES2L. Yeah, really rolls off the tongue, huh? So this motherboard attracted me, partly because I already had it. This was the heart of my original PC build back in 2011-ish. And something that I like about it is the fact that it's got SATA, IDE and a floppy disk controller. So we can plug everything in that we need to for this build. Uh, we can have modern and legacy stuff. And it's got plenty of I.O. at the back as well as built-in audio. So that's all handy stuff. Speaking of modern components, instead of a hard disk drive, we're going to be going with a Kingston SSD. This is a 240 gigabyte model. Not really much else to say about that, but that can expire SATA, hence the need for a SATA port. PSU wise, I've got uh, this. It's a PSU that I found. It's a 450 watt uh, win power PSU. But again, the reason I picked this one is because it's got Molex and SATA connectors which of course we need for the SSD. Lots of modern PSUs have this, so if needs be, I can replace it with something a bit more up to date. Next, we've got the RAM. I'm going for two gigabytes here. This is just a very basic two gigabyte stick. I could go for two X one gigabyte, but I don't have them. So two gigabytes it is. And now the star of the show itself. Here we have a GeForce 8600 GT. Once again, about 2008, I think. And this is a Again, it's not the highest end card that was about at the time, but it will do just fine for us. And something that I really like about it is that it's got dual outputs, which will be very, very useful when it comes to capturing stuff. I'll come back to that in a separate video. Sound card, and I know that the board has built-in sound, but I thought I'd chuck this Sound Blaster Live in there because I want to use it, damn it. This is an SB0220. So this is the Live 5.1 Digital, which I think was kind of a budget release, but I'm not 100% on that one. And of course we're going to have the requisite DVD ROM drive and of course a floppy disk drive. We've got to have somewhere for all these bits and pieces to go. So I picked up this Be Quiet Silent Base 600, which <laughs> it may be a little bit overkill for what we're doing, but I like the look of it. And <laughs> retro cases are surprisingly difficult to find on eBay. So for the price that I was going to end up paying for a retro case, I might as well just buy a new one. And the thing that I particularly liked about this case, other than the front panel USB, which is, you know, pretty standard these days, is the front panel expansion bays. Because not very many modern cases have them anymore, so it was uh, kind of a test to find one that did. 
So before we start putting things actually in the case, I want to just prepare the motherboard first. So to socket the processor into this motherboard, you've got to undo this latch. And uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a little more difficult than it looks, but I managed to get there in the end. And as with most processors, just need to chuck it in there and clamp it back together. And there we go. Same sort of deal with the RAM, you know how this goes. I'm sure if you've built computers before, then <laughs> you know what's going to be involved here. It's not changed that much in the last 20 years. So we need to put the cooler on the CPU, but before we do that, we need some thermal paste. So I've got this Arctic MX4 stuff, and we just need to blob that on there. I'll be honest, I'm never 100% sure how or how much thermal paste I'm supposed to put on, but it always seems to work fine. And here we've just got the stock Intel cooler. At some point I would like to replace that with something a little bit quieter. It's not exactly the best CPU cooler on the market. And there was a reason why it was free with the CPU. However, it's what we've got for now, so it'll do. Just wind that round and make sure that the cable is out of the way of the fan. And there we have it, so now we can start putting things in the case. And because it's a modern case, we have modern conveniences, such as thumb screws. And there's a lot of stuff in this case already, mainly uh, front panel cables and things like that. Now in goes the board, but haven't I forgotten something? Ah yes, of course. I've forgotten the back I.O. plate. That just slots into the back of the case and, again, surprisingly difficult to get in. Okay, take two. So this should just line up with the screw holes that are already there. Now it's just a case of screwing everything in. Time to put in our expansion cards and we'll start with the graphics card. Now, <laughs> I said about thumb screws before, but the screws that were in the back of the case were... They were screwed a little bit too tightly for your thumbs, so I had to get the screwdriver out anyway. Brilliant. Once that was out, I could put in the graphics card, screw that in, and simple as that, really. Next, we have the sound card, and I was not very good at aiming this. And, of course, we need our SSD to go in there as well. So, once again, modern convenience. It's got mounting slots specifically for SSDs. So that makes it a lot easier. That means we don't have to mess around with brackets and stuff. Now we are having a floppy drive in this, but as you saw before, there is no floppy drive bay at the front, so we need to steal this thing from the HP PC. And now we can install both our drives. And again, there's supposed to be some sort of toolless locking mechanism here, but it didn't seem to work properly. So uh, I put some screws in just for good measure. And the same with the floppy drive adapter, which wasn't really a floppy drive adapter, but it worked. I do intend to get a more suitable one later on. Okay, in goes the PSU, which just about fits. Just using some thumb screws for that, and, well, we've got our nest of cables here, as is the case for PSUs of this vintage. 
There's a reason we all go for modular PSUs these days. I also put the IDE ribbon cables in off camera because you don't need to see that and already it's become a cable management nightmare. Right now time to put in the CPU power, the 4 pin CPU power and yeah I found that it didn't reach all the way across the motherboard because the connector on the board is as far away as it could possibly be from the PSU so it wouldn't reach while the PSU was still screwed in. Yeah not the best situation. And yeah, I've kind of left the PSU floating there, but don't worry, I've got a solution. Now the case actually came with a couple of fans, but I only found one fan connector on my motherboard. So I just ordered this splitter so I can plug them both in. Simple as that. And I also ordered a cable that will solve my PSU issue. It's not a terribly long extension cable, in fact it's a lot shorter than the listing said it was, but it makes it long enough so that'll do me. And just get that PSU properly screwed in again. So you may be wondering, how the heck do you actually install Windows XP on an SSD? Surely SSDs are a bit too new for that, and normally you would be absolutely right. And I will explain that in a second, but first we had a little bit of a snag. Uh, I discovered a little bit too late that the black disk drive that I put in did not work. So I replaced it with a different disk drive, which did not work. So I replaced it with a different disk drive, and as you can see, this one works. And before we finish with the hardware side of things, I also picked up a more suitable bracket for my floppy disk drive. And in addition to that I ordered a black floppy disk drive. So that just screws in to this 3D printed bracket and that looks much much nicer. We've not got a massive gap in the front of our PC anymore. I also ordered a refurbished disk drive. Once again it's a DVD-ROM drive because who knows what we're going to be running on this thing and it would have been appropriate to the time, 2008. Just using a little bit of IPA to clean off the sticker residue that was on the front and we can install this too. Okay, back to installing Windows. So you may be looking at this and thinking, hang on a minute, that's Windows 7. No, 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 you're not cheating me here. That's Windows 7, and it even says Windows 7 there. Well, the trick is, what you've got to do is use a Windows 7 disk so you can access disk part, which comes with the Windows 7 setup. And you can use this to partition the SSD in such a way that XP can both see it and use it properly without destroying it in the process. So if you are doing this yourself at home, you can just follow the commands that are on screen right now and it should work with just about every SSD going. And we just exit that and exit that again. And then exit the whole thing. And after that we can jump straight into the Windows XP setup. I'm using XP Professional here, just uh, just as a matter of interest, and we can see that the disk partition is recognised. So all we need to do is just quick format it in NTFS, or slow format it if you really feel like it. At this stage there's not a whole lot else we can do, so let's just sit back and let it do its thing. It was the second snag that I ran into, so I thought I'd be smart about it, and I thought, okay, I'll strip out all the things that I don't need, and make it so that it's pretty much a completely automated install and it was a completely automated install and I got the most bare bones basic installation of Windows XP I could possibly have imagined. You'll note that it doesn't even have the uh, visual style that comes with XP or anything like that so I don't know what the heck I managed to do here but yeah I kind of wasted my time with this one. I did attempt to get all the stuff installed that I had removed before somehow, but yeah, I couldn't get it to a state where it was actually usable, so I just used the normal disk from there on out. So I had to write this off and reinstall. Ah, that's more like it. That's what we need. So these are all the obvious bits and pieces that you need to do during a Windows install. Time zones, included programs, username, all that good stuff. Okay, take two. Looks like we've got a proper good install of XP now. 
I won't show you all the steps of installing XP, you know what it looks like. It's uh, it's pretty much just a progress bar and also some text boxes that you put your username in. But here we go, we've actually got a proper decent install of XP. Thank goodness. And it works perfectly with the SSD. Now we've got the fun part of installing all the drivers and bits and bobs, and I ran into yet another snag, because for some reason, when I tried to install a Sound Blaster, and this was from the CD-ROM, it didn't detect any Sound Blaster audio card on my system, which was a bit of a pain. And I wasn't really sure why this was the case, because as far as I could tell, there wasn't any issue with the card itself, it had worked in previous systems. I tried various different setup programs, like I said, I got the original disc, um, I also found some stuff on Vogons, the driver collection, and in fact it didn't even appear as an unknown device in Device Manager, so I was really kind of puzzled by why it wasn't there. And I thought, well, maybe the motherboard just can't see it because it's too old, potentially? I did wonder if it wasn't seated properly, so I tried reseating it, and, well, that didn't work either. Oh, spoilers. So I thought, well, let's see if it is actually the card. So I found this other card that I had lying around. This is some sort of knockoff sound blaster thing. Uh, so I threw that in there and that wasn't detected either. So we're going to have to sack sound cards off for the time being. But thankfully we do have onboard audio, which will do the job. Once again, this is this the era that we're targeting here is 2007, 2008. So we really, really don't need any sound blast of support, we don't need any LPL3 or Adlib or anything like that, we just need some degree of sound. And some degree of sound is exactly what we've got. Not that you can hear it because I forgot to turn my speakers up, but you'll just have to trust me. And there we go, we have a fresh, clean install of Windows XP. At this point you could say build's complete, and it kind of is complete, but I don't think you can say a build is truly complete without giving it a test flight first. So let's get some games and do just that. Right then, so we're going to start with something easy for the computer to handle, and this will be a good test of the old uh, CD-ROM drive. Extremely slowly opening CD-ROM drive, but, well, DVD-ROM drive. But I'm hoping that that is not um, a bad sign. Of course it's going to be spaces. Because you know me. Thanks. Recommend you to start your computer. Nah, that'd be great. I think I can launch it from this daft menu here. So we want the uh, hardware renderer. The video is normally not the problematic bit. Let's just play the down game. Oh dear. That didn't look very uh, promising. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness, it runs like absolute crapola. Why? I mean, I know they moaned that DirectX wasn't installed, but. It is installed. <laughs> I'll just tell you that much, because if we go to DXDiag, yes, DirectX version DirectX 9.0C, display NVIDIA GeForce 8600 GT. Hmm. Hmm. DX Media. This package is meant for professional redistribution only. Well, I don't care. I'm going to run it anyway. Anyway, now this is a game that um, I would have loved to have running 
reasonably. When I was a little one. Yeah, we've got the full collection. Uh, this is from <laughs> this is from um, Origin, but when it was first released, the Ultimate Collection, and it it was um, completely DRM free, which is fantastic. And this is that copy. I remember when I uh, let's just do let's just do pleasant view. Jeez. <laughs> I remember on my computer from around the time it would have been 2005 I had my big tower PC uh, probably with quite a similar monitor to this one and my cousin was around and we tried playing The Sims 2 so I got my uh, I got my original Thai copy of the game <laughs> oh man this has been through some stuff and uh, we started installing it. So we installed it and installed it. It took a long, long time to install this game. And we started it up. And it was going through all this. This was without any expansions, I must uh, hasten to add. So it was just loading the neighbourhood, it was just loading to here. <laughs> and as soon as it got to that last loading bar and it actually got into the neighbourhood, he had to go on. So this really is a dream come true. This is this is what I wanted. No. I even remember playing it on a laptop from maybe 2009, 10. Nah, no, it would have been earlier than that. It would have been about 2007 or 8. And it was still crap. It was better, but it was still absolute nonsense and garbage. But I had some expansion packs then. Yowza, this runs like a dream. Let me just make sure, let <laughs> me just make sure everything's uh, as high as it can go. My goodness, it can go up to 1600 by 1200. I've never quite understood this option, use square pixels. We want to smooth the edges, oh you bet you want to smooth the edges. Uh, the refresh rate, would stand to be a bit higher I think. I think this can do 75 hertz, yep. Yeah. Can it do 85 hertz at uh, 760? Oh it can, oh look. Smooth. Oh, <laughs> but this is just on the uh, on the neighbourhood screen. We need to actually look at a house before we uh, before we jump to any conclusions here. So let's create a sim. Now this is going to be weird because it's going to be all uh, inbuilt stuff. Um, So there's not going to be any mods, which is a shame because I, I mean, whenever I've got a Sims game, I just mod the hell out of it. Yeah, let's just randomise. My good, they've all got really chubby faces, haven't they, women in this? She'll do. She looks like a Jennifer. Um. What? I mean, I don't even know what the, um, the normal game has in it. What's a cool hairdo? Is that a cool hairdo? No, no, I don't think so. It's um, I mean, it's nice and smooth. It just doesn't feel like I've got great control with the mouse. But that might just be, well, I don't know what's causing that actually. It just feels like it's a little bit laggy on that front. But the rest of the controls seem fine. So I don't know what that's all about. Outfits? Well, she don't want that outfit. That's just dreadful. I don't really know what's going on there. Most of the Female tops in this, the midriff is, is out. My goodness, you don't get much, do you? There's a reason why, why we mod these games. She can have a, a, a nightlife aspiration and she's turned on by swimwear and uh, 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 she's a cook and she's not liking robots. Or zombies, even. <laughs> Let's just make another person. This is going to be. Oh my goodness, look at this dude. I feel like I just need to leave this dude as he is, I'm, just, I'm not changing him. Um, uh, baked bean. Create a sim works fantastic. That loads instantly. That SSD really is just a m magnificent, isn't it? Magnificent. 
it's amazing how well it works. Well, it's not. Is it amazing? I mean, we know our SSDs are super, super fast, but this is XP, so. You know, you don't expect it to be as fast, but it's still. I mean, that is. If not as fast, then getting on for it as my regular PC, and that's got. I mean, that's got SSDs coming out of the wazoo. <laughs> Let's follow the things. Yeah. Thing is, you can, you can tell that this game is designed for this era of. Um, I don't need no game tips. Come on. You can really tell that this game is designed for this era of hardware because uh, if I just move Bait Bean outside, go stop looking at the sink, you weird. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, Sims 2, once they, uh, once they get something in the heads, that's it. My goodness, this is a terrible little house, isn't it? There's barely any room to move. Yeah, look, here we go. So, they cast actual dynamic shadows and stuff. Whereas if you try and run it on something a bit newer, then you just get a black square underneath your sim, and it's like, mm, that's not good. I mean, it always, it is always amusing to me how... In like 2004, this was the height of <laughs> technology for TVs. It's beauty. It's just pure beauty. You could either have that or you could have... I mean, it, I would pick that, you know. You know me. Now, something that didn't work at all on the previous system. Well, it sort of worked. Let's give this a try. And I like how I'm picking all these things, it's literally just to test it out. Your appointment to FEMA should be finalised within the week. I have already discussed the matter with the Senate. I take it he was agreeable. He didn't really have a choice. Audio's a bit crackly, but I don't know if that's because I'm recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Well, this is certainly, um, interesting. I can't... JC's got like a neck brace. Well, this is an interesting way of playing Deus Ex. You can only look in one direction. It didn't really work at all on the old system, on the, um, the previous XP build. Hi Paul, I didn't realise you came all this way. Uh, crossbow, always go with the crossbow. Uh, let's just see what this looks like. That looks fine. Ah! Go away! What did I do to you? Fine, come over here. Come over here and say that, huh? Pacifist run, pacifist run. Have it. Go on, Paul. Shoot your own guys. Ha! <laughs> well, he's coming in. All he's coming to play. All right. I don't really care. It wor It works. It runs. It's perfect. Much better than the MX two hundred could do. I know this isn't going to be a great. Uh, display of this PC's power, but I just want to try it. I just want to see what it's like. I mean, it is on the Core 2 Duo, so I, I imagine late game will be quite horrendous, but... We can try it for now. This has never been played. <laughs> X-Fire! <laughs> Fantastic. X-Fire has over two and a half million registered users. I doubt that very much today. Eesh, no. Well, here it is. Oh, and I start with a scout. Oh, well, that's good. Huh. This is actually a really good place to start. We've got money, we've got food. I know we've got floodplains, but. Because I believe this sand, we've got the water just there. And the goody hut. Beauty. So, yeah, I do kind of want to start with a warrior. Oi! Flipping lions, come and attack me, you jerks. Want the XP.
Do 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 do. And that is where I'm going to leave it because I could just stay here and play all day. Yeah. Exit. My goodness, what a game! What a game! What a game! Once I've got those expansions, I can uh, play it some more. It wouldn't be a proper build if I wasn't to try out the mighty, the unparalleled, the legendary. The unparalleled, the mighty, the legendary Axis Arena. That's loud. Ah! Get away from me. Mad. I enjoy this game far too much. What else have I got? Oh, I've got a pew pew. Yay! Oh my, I forgot about that view. Yeah! Hehe. <laughs> Yeah, this game is uh, it's too good. I can't remember how to go up and down. Sniping. With the world's slowest flipping sniper rifle. Well, of course this works admirably. Yay, we won! I bow to you, I bow to you, I bow to you. Wee Wee! Ugh, oh, what a game. Yeah. <laughs> of course it works because they flip in 2001, but I don't care. This is this is the era that I played this game, so yeah, this is. <sighs> I'm. <laughs> I mean, to a lot of people, this will just be some crappy old machine, but to me, this is this is exactly what I was after, and I'm so chuffed with it. <laughs> uh, man, it's beautiful. This is the sort of machine that I would have installed, what is it called, um... Oh, what's that crappy piece of software? Tune Up Utilities! That's it. In fact... <laughs> it feels like I need LimeWire on here. And like Kazar and Napster and all that junk. And, and... Flipping... Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I bet it's not here. I bet it gets uninstalled with some update. But yeah, I mean, if if I could chat to my mates via Windows Live Messenger from here, that would just be, mm, 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 uh, you know. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed that build. Again, apologies for the uh, slightly disjointed nature of the video content, but. I'm sure you got the, the idea. So, there's, uh, there's some potential with that PC. I'm a bit concerned that the PCI lanes don't seem to work properly, at least not with sound cards. I'm wondering if that's to do with the PSU. But, you know, maybe I can replace that in future and, and see if it works then. Or maybe it's just the fact that that board is perhaps too new for those sound cards. So possibly I could get hold of something like an XFi and see if that works in there. Um, but, as for now, it works really, really well. I'm really chuffed with it and, well, I've been using it for months. Not really any issues at all. The SSD still works and it works fantastically. Not really much else to add, so thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, see you for the next one.